Hey guys, in today's project, we're going to install a air fuel ratio gauge in my 85 Ford F-150. Um, I'm still having some challenges getting my carburetor dialed in. So in order to get that thing calibrated and get it tuned the right way, I need to put in this air fuel mixture gauge. And I got this one from uh, aemelectronics.com, performance gauges. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and install this in the truck today. And that way we can understand uh, much better how our truck is performing, what the uh, fuel mixture looks like, and be able to dial in the timing and the carburetor. So this shouldn't take very long. So we're just going to go ahead and start with the unboxing here. So as you open this thing up, you see the gauge, what it looks like here. So we've got the O2 sensor that will go in the exhaust down below the truck. We've got a bung. So if your vehicle doesn't already have a bung, it comes with a bung. The last one I bought didn't have a bung. So this is nice that this one comes with one. Got the long cable here that plugs into the back of the, the uh, gauge. And then you've got this long cable that uh, I believe goes from the oxygen sensor. So this is the end of the oxygen sensor, and that will plug into this cable. So it looks like it's a pretty long wire, and I should be able to get, uh, get that installed where I want it with no issues. And then inside here, we got a couple cards. Those will be thrown away promptly. And then I've got the instructions here. I think this is the instructions. Nope, it's not the instructions. This is just a product bulletin update. All right, where are my instructions? Let me go find out where I put those. I think maybe I took those out of the box. Oh, and then you get a really cool uh, AEM sticker, which we'll throw that away. So I found out that for the instructions, you actually have to go to this QR code on this product update bulletin. They didn't actually pack the instructions in the box. Lame. Now that I got my instructions printed out, I want to start with this thing here. So this is going to go into the exhaust area. And so you can see these wires here that are going to the oxygen sensor. Um, that's just kind of sliding up and down. It's exposing these small little wires that go into the oxygen sensor. So I want to secure that a little bit better. So I'm going to wrap some electrical tape around this just to get this uh, tightened up and protect those wires. Now I don't really have a lot of options in terms of where I can put this because I need access to get the welder on here. So I think I'm going to just install it right here and uh, that way I can still get a welder on there. But this is going to be, we're gonna, we're gonna have maybe a little bit of ground clearance issue here because it is sticking down a little bit. So I wanna try to get it as high and get that as protected as we possibly can. So I think I'm just gonna drill a hole and install it right there. We'll start by drilling a pilot hole just to get the hole started. And then we can take a bigger bit here and get that drilled out for the size of the bung. I think that might be good enough where I can just tap that in. All right, we've got our bung welded in here. It's not a great looking weld, but it's not gonna leak. It's just hard to get in here and weld when you, you know, you don't have a really good space to move your welder around. So. We're just now going to go ahead and install this sensor into the bung. And this is where it comes up right under that, uh, the, the uh, heater fan, heater and cooler fan, right over the top of the wheel well. And then we've got plenty of cord that we can work with. So now I just need to figure out where I want to route this into the firewall through the firewall into the cabin. So we got the 
wire run to the O2 sensor in the exhaust and up through the uh, up through the firewall into the cab. Now we have to run the power to the gauge and really I'm only going to be using two wires on this one. So we've got the red switched wire so it needs to be 12 volt switched on a 5 amp fuse. So I need to find a wire that has a 5 amp fuse on it and then the black goes to ground. Now since I only need the red and the black wire I went ahead and put crimps on the ends of the other wires, the data wires. That way if I do decide to get an analog uh, connection or interface to that. They're ready to go ahead and install, but I also wanted to protect those wires so they're not throwing off faulty readings or anything. So unfortunately I couldn't mount this centered on this piece of dash panel because right down the middle there is a plastic support beam right, right behind there and I couldn't drill into that so I had to offset. It looks kind of ugly but I'm probably going to end up replacing this whole dash at some point anyway, so I'm just going to put it on here like this, and uh, hopefully that'll work for now. And now I just got to get the wires run to it. All right, let's go ahead and start this up and see how this works. You'll find uh, on my truck here, mine is special because I don't even need a key. How nice is that? <laughs> Alright, so now we got the gauge working and it's in heating mode, which means the sensor that goes into the exhaust is heating up and that needs to warm up before we can get a good reading on the, uh, the fuel-air mixture. So once that settles in, we'll be able to get a reading. For unleaded fuel, we should have a reading around 14.65 to 15. So because the truck is running at high idle right now, it's looking like it's burning a little rich, but now we've got it settled down. Idle has come down, and now we're back up to the uh, 14 and a half to 15 area. Again, we want that, uh, I want to dial this in to around 15, so I still need to do some tweaking on the carburetor, get that mixture set right, and then probably adjust the timing a little bit more. If you like this video, appreciate a subscribe and a like. Thanks for watching.